In today's video, I'm going over everything you need to know about the A200 ETF listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Hi everyone, and welcome to the series on exchange traded funds or ETF investing, where I look into specific ETFs and show everything you need to know about the product offering before buying shares of the fund. ETFs are personally my favorite way to passively invest as it takes the stress and worry out of stock market investing, which can be very volatile with wild price swings holding individual stocks. We will go over the ETF fact sheet including the management fee, the index the ETF tracks, dividend yield, payment frequency, and the fund's performance. I will also go over the top 10 holdings in the fund, as these typically make up the largest portion of the weightings and resulting performance of the ETF overall. It is always crucial to understand what you actually own in these ETFs before buying them. If there's any ETFs you are interested in and would like me to make a video on, write it down in the comment section below. A200 is an ETF provided by BetaShares, who own and operate the fund. Beta shares are the ones who actually own the underlying shares in the individual companies. So when we buy shares in the ETF, we buy from beta shares, who continually issue new shares in an open-end fund, and not the individual companies inside the ETF. A200 aims to track the performance of the S&P ASX 200, which contains the largest 200 Australian companies by market cap. It contains broadly diversified exposure to Australian companies and property trusts, offering potential long-term capital growth and dividend income with franking credits to avoid double taxation. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll see how good the returns and performance of A200 have been over time. To find the ETF in your brokerage account, you will need to type in the ticker code A200 to bring up the options to buy or sell shares in the fund. It pays distributions, which are dividends from the ETF, four times a year with a yield of 2.3% and has a management expense ratio, or MER, of 0.07% per year. So for every $10,000 invested, it will cost $7 per year in fees. This isn't a bill you see immediately, it is automatically deducted from how much money you have invested in the ETF, so you never really notice anything being paid or taken out of your brokerage account. Now, since this ETF tracks the Australian markets, it is heavily tilted towards banks and mining companies. The largest portion of the fund at 30% is in financials, followed by materials at 21% and healthcare at 10%. Utilities and energy companies make up the smallest percentage of the fund under 4% each. One of the benefits of investing in Australian shares is their historically high dividend yields, due to the banking and material sector, along with the franking credits to eliminate double taxation on company earnings paid out via dividends, with the possibility of getting a tax refund if your tax rate is lower than the corporate tax rate. The bulk of the Australian stock market returns have come from dividend reinvestment leading to the compound growth effect over time. If you're enjoying this style of video, feel free to give it a like to let me know and subscribe for more. Now when purchasing shares in an ETF, I like to have a basic understanding of the top 10 holdings as these companies will have most of my money allocated to them, and they will end up driving the bulk of the fund's performance. So we'll quickly go over which companies are in the ETF's top holdings and what they do to make money. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia is a multinational Australian bank with businesses across New Zealand, Asia, the United States and the UK. It provides a variety of financial services, including retail, business and institutional banking, funds management, superannuation, insurance, investment and broking services. The Commonwealth Bank is the largest Australian listed company on the Australian Stock Exchange and makes most of its money through retail banking services along with business and private bank lending. BHP is an Anglo-Australian multinational mining, metals and petroleum company headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. BHP was founded in 1885 in the mining town of Silverton, New South Wales, and by 2017, BHP was the largest mining company in the world based on market cap. It makes money by mining, exporting iron ore, copper, coal and extracting petroleum products around the world. Westpac is an Australian bank and financial services provider headquartered in Sydney, Australia. Established in 1817 as the Bank of New South Wales, it acquired the Commercial Bank of Australia in 1982, before being renamed shortly afterwards. It is one of Australia's big four banks and is Australia's first and oldest banking institution. It makes money from the provision of financial services, including lending, foreign exchange, superannuation funds, investment portfolio management and insurance services. CSL is a global biotechnology company that researches, develops, manufactures and markets products to treat and prevent serious human medical conditions. CSL's product areas include blood plasma derivatives, vaccines, antivenom and cell culture reagents used in various medical and genetic research and manufacturing applications. It primarily makes money by manufacturing blood plasma therapies and vaccines around the world. National Australia Bank, or simply NAB, is one of the four largest financial institutions in Australia in terms of size, earnings and customers. NAB was ranked the 21st largest bank in the world, measured by market cap, 
and 52nd largest bank in the world as measured by total assets in 2019. NAB is one of the largest lenders to small and medium businesses in Australia and makes money through traditional banking services, including wealth management, investment banking, credit and access card facilities and insurance. West Farmers Limited is an Australian conglomerate headquartered in Perth, Western Australia. It has interests predominantly in Australia and New Zealand, operating in retail, chemical, fertiliser, industrial and safety products. West Farmers was founded in 1914 to provide services and merchandise to Western Australian farmers. It was listed on the Australian Securities Exchange in 1984 and grew into a major retail conglomerate, including many well-known subsidiaries such as Bunnings, Kmart, Officeworks and various industrial companies. It makes money by selling various industrial products such as gases, safety equipment, fertilisers and various day-to-day -day household products and building materials to consumers. The Australia and New Zealand Banking Group Limited, commonly called ANZ, is an Australian multinational banking and financial services company headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. ANZ was established in 1951 when the Bank of Australasia merged with the Union Bank of Australia Limited. It is one of the big four Australian banks, and Australian operations make up the largest part of ANZ's business, with commercial and retail banking dominating. ANZ is also the largest bank in New Zealand. It makes money by lending to retail customers and businesses, along with investment banking, insurance, credit and access card facilities. Woolworths, also known as Woolies, is an Australian chain of supermarkets and grocery stores owned by Woolworths Group. Founded in 1924, Woolworths today is Australia's biggest supermarket chain with a market share of 33% as of 2019. Woolworths specialises in groceries whilst also selling liquor, magazine, health and beauty products, along with household products, pet and baby supplies, plus stationery from its well-known subsidiaries, including Big W, BWS and Dan Murphy's, which is where it makes all of its money. Macquarie Group is an Australian multinational independent investment bank and financial services company. Headquartered and listed in Australia, it is the world's largest infrastructure asset manager and Australia's top-ranked mergers and acquisition advisor, with more than $600 billion in assets under management. Macquarie generates much of its revenue from divisions that generate annuity-style income. Those divisions include asset management, corporate asset finance and banking, generating more than 70% of revenues, which means Macquarie is less affected by market movements, economic cycles and other adverse external events. Rio Tinto is an Anglo-Australian multinational and the world's second largest metals and mining corporation, behind BHP, producing iron ore, copper, diamonds, gold and uranium. The company was founded in 1873 when a multinational consortium of investors purchased a mine complex on the Rio Tinto in Spain from the Spanish government. Since then, the company has grown through a long series of mergers and acquisitions to place itself among the world leaders in the production of many commodities, including aluminium, iron ore, copper, uranium and diamonds. Although primarily focused on extraction of minerals, Rio Tinto also has significant operations in refining, particularly for refining bauxite and iron ore. It makes money by mining, processing and exporting these commodities around the world. Now, ETFs are considered to be low-risk investments because they are low-cost and hold a basket of stocks or other securities, increasing diversification. For most individual investors, ETFs represent an ideal type of asset which builds a diversified portfolio. Still, unique risks can arise from holding ETFs as well as other special considerations paid to taxation, depending on the type of ETF. Since inception, A200 has an average annualised return of 9.6%, and with dividends reinvested, it will greatly increase the cumulative return over time. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but it's always a good sign of consistently improving business fundamentals, continually driving each individual stock higher within the ETF. I prefer to look at the cumulative returns as it includes the dividends paid to shareholders, which should always be included as we're getting some value back, plus with the dividends reinvested, this is what provides the compounding effect, exponentially increasing our returns the longer we have our money invested in the fund. This is the sort of approach I take investing for the very long term using ETFs, and one day live off the investment portfolio as passive income through either dividends or selling down small parts of the position, but maintaining the bulk of the capital. If you want to see how these companies make money in detail, watch the playlist shown in the end screen. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ETF and whether you currently own any shares or plan to buy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more investing and Tesla videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.